When we think of robots, we think of factory floors in science fiction movies. Or as we've shown you on past episodes of Make, Create, Innovate, the Roomba vacuum cleaner or Bob the security guard. In these underground research labs in Zurich in Switzerland, the approach has been radically different. Robots so small, so miniature, they're barely visible to the eye and able to go places almost beyond our imagination. We're making micro and nano robots that are guided by externally generated magnetic fields for use in the human body. Brad Nelson is a mechanical engineer that likes to think small, very small. He's a pioneer in a field that's only existed for the last decade or so, nano robotics. To give you an idea how small these are, if I had a teaspoon, I could fit about three billion of them in a teaspoon. So. Three billion? It's kind of unimaginable. It is kind of unimaginable, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the first challenges were how to make these things move. The inspiration comes from nature, the E. coli bacterium in particular, which is propelled along by a rotating tail, or so-called flagellum. Now, we can't make that motor. We don't have the technology for that. But what we brought in were, were some lessons we'd learned about magnetic fields and using magnetism to move, move these things. So we, we actually take these flagella uh, and we magnetize them. And then we have a special rotating field, a, a special type of magnetic field we generate, which allows them to swim. Having cracked propulsion, Nelson and his team worked on refining how the nanobots moved, how they danced, a waltz orchestrated on a nano scale. The nanobots are all manufactured in ultra clean rooms like this, specially lit for the purpose. Machines to maneuver them about are also being designed and built. The target market is healthcare. What, what you see on the screen here is an image through our ophthalmic microscope. Of, a, of an artificial eye, and in the middle of that is, is what we call a micro-robot. It's about a third of a millimeter in diameter, about a millimeter or so long, so very, very tiny. So this particular device was made to carry drugs, and so we can move it to any location on the retina, and then as it sits there, cause it to diffuse drugs off of it to a very particular location. As well as our eyes, Nelson is targeting our hearts. An operation to repair damaged heart tissue is already planned for later this year. From one vital organ to another, he hopes his machines could be used in the brain. So we've looked at, at applications, for instance, in, in deep brain stimulation and implanting electrodes uh, in the brain, and we've looked at putting catheters uh, within the uh, vasculature of the, of the brain. And this could just be the beginning for Nelson's nanobots. He believes they could help us environmentally, something microscopic to tackle something massive, like an oil spill. These are very small. If we can uh, create swarms of them that can go out, they can, they can cover a broad area. Water treatment, environmental cleanup, where you might be able to put uh, hundreds, thousands, millions of these devices uh, and have them swim through uh, polluted water, catalyze pollutants, and then collect them later back. That's a particular application that's, that's exciting and that we're, we're certainly focusing on here.